Suppose we want to solve the quadratic equation x squared minus 2x minus 3 equals 0. Now we know that any quadratic equation has the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals 0, where a, b, and c are fixed numbers, and x is the variable. Well, x is what we're looking for, actually. x is the unknown. So for this particular equation, a, the coefficient of x squared, is 1. b, which is the coefficient of x, is minus 2. c, which is the constant term, is minus 3. So we put all of those into our quadratic equation formula for the roots or the solutions, which is minus b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac divided by 2a. So we have minus b minus minus 2 is plus 2 plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 2 squared is 4 minus 4 times a, which is 1 times c, which is minus 3. And all of this, the whole lot, is divided by 2 times 1. So we get 2 plus or minus the square root of uh, 4. Uh, well, we, mu we can multiply these together first. Minus 4 by 1 is minus 4 by minus 3 is uh, plus 12. So we get 4 plus 12, which is 16. And we divide by 2 times 1, which is 2. You know, you get two solutions, whether we take plus or minus here. If we take plus, we get 2 plus 4 over 2. Square, um, that's 3. Or if we take the minus sign, we get 2 minus 4, which is minus 2. Minus 2 divided by 2 is minus 1. So those are our two solutions. Now, where are the solutions or the roots on a graph? A graph of this quadratic expression here. So we put y equal to this quadratic expression and, and draw a graph of it. Well, we know that the graph of a quadratic expression is a parabola. A parabola is a U-shape. can either be upright or inverted, depending on the sign of the, the x-squared term. So the sign of the x-squared term is positive, which means it's actually going to look like this. And it will cross the x-axis at the roots. So it'll cross the x-axis at 3 and at minus 1. Why is that? Well, the reason is that when y is 0, we just, we're just solving this quadratic equation. So when y is 0, we got x is minus 1, or x is 3. They're the roots, or the solutions. Sometimes a quadratic equation has only one root. In that case, the graph will just touch the x-axis at a single point. Now, let's look at this quadratic equation a is 1, b is 6, c is 13. So we fit it into our formula. So we have minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared minus 4 times 1 times 13. And the whole lot is divided by 2 times 1. So we get minus 6 plus or minus the square root of 6 squared is 36. Here we have minus 4 by 1 by 13, which is minus 52. So what we get inside the square root sign is 36 minus 52. Now that's actually minus 16. And the whole lot is divided by 2 times 1, which is 2. Now, the next step would be to evaluate the square root, but you see there's a problem. What is the square root of minus 16? So now we're going into complex number territory. Okay, so this equation does not have real solutions. So you would not have come across an example like this before. In all the examples you did, you would have seen that b squared minus 4ac is either strictly, is greater than or equal to 0, essentially. It's a positive number, or 0. But now we have a situation where b squared minus 4ac is negative. So how are we going to deal with this? Well, this, where, this is where the square root of minus 1 comes in, which we denote by the Greek letter iota. So we, we can write the square root of minus 16 in terms of the square root of minus 1, or i. We see that the square root of minus 16 is the square root of 16 times minus 1. So that's how we can bring in the square root of minus 1. We factorize the square root of minus 16 as 6, or we factorize minus 16 as plus 16 times minus 1. 
and what if, what we can actually do then is get the square root of each factor. Okay, you can do that. If you get the square root of a product, we get these product of square roots. The square root of 16 is 4. I'll just take the positive square root for now. Actually, the plus or minus will take care of both situations. Uh, the square root of minus 1 is i. So we can write the square root of minus 16 as 4i. So basically, you just get the square root of this number, the positive number, and you write i after it. That's all you do. So we get two solutions, depending on whether we take the plus or minus sign. So we take the plus sign, we have the solution minus 6 plus 4i over 2. That can be broken down into minus 6 over 2, which is minus 3, plus 4i over 2, which is plus 2i. So we can split this into two fractions. If we take the minus sign here, we have the solution minus 6 minus 4i all divided by 2. And we can split this into two fractions. Minus 6 divided by plus 2 is minus 3. Minus 4i divided by plus 2 is minus 2i. Notice that we have a conjugate pair here. As I explained in an earlier video, the conjugate or the complex conjugate of minus 3 plus 2i is got by changing the sign of the imaginary part. So this plus sign becomes a minus sign. So the conjugate of minus 3 plus 2i is minus 3 minus 2i. Now, if we call one of these complex numbers z, as I explained in the previous video, the letter z is often used to denote a complex number. I just draw a line through the z so I don't confuse uh, the letter z with the number 2, this number 2 here. If z is a solution, then z bar, which is the complex conjugate of z, is also a solution of this equation here. Now I'm using the letter z instead of the letter x. You'll often see the letter z used when we're looking at a quadratic equation which has complex roots. So all I've done is taken the equation from the start, which was x squared plus 6x plus 13 equals 0, and I've replaced the letter x with the letter z. That's often done to indicate that our quadratic equation could have complex solutions. Now let's look at the graph of this quadratic expression. Uh, I could use the letter z, but I'm just going back to using the letter x here just to show the graph. Now the graph will not cross the x-axis because there are no real solutions. These are the solutions. Well, they don't belong on the x-axis because the x-axis is a real number line, is the real number line. Well, it's not the real number line. The y-axis is also a real number line. Only real numbers can appear in the x-axis. Since these are not real numbers, then, you know, the graph doesn't cross the x-axis. I'll talk about how to represent these graphically in another video. So the graph will lie above the x-axis. It's actually an upright parabola because this is positive, this x squared. Um, you know, we could have a quadratic function that looks like this. This would happen if the x squared term was negative. Again, this doesn't cross the x-axis. You can look at the solutions by going to Wolfram Alpha, typing in your quadratic equation, and you'll also get a graph of it. And straight away from the graph, we know that there are no real solutions to the quadratic equation because the graph doesn't cross the x-axis. So this is what I, sh I showed you a, a second ago. If you want to look at the solutions to this, you can just scroll down. And here are the solutions, the conjugate pair. Now what I want to do next is to check one of the solutions. So I'm going to check this solution here by plugging it into the quadratic equation. So that means I replace x with minus 3 plus 2i. So what I get is minus 3 plus 2i squared. We have to get x squared. Then I have plus 6 times the solution, which is minus, well, what we think is the solution. I'm just checking it. And then we have plus 13. And if we work all of this out, we should get 0. We should get the right-hand side, which is 0. 
you can do the same for the other solution but I'll just do this one here now how do we square minus 3 plus 2i well that just means minus 3 plus 2i multiplied by itself and we could do it that way just multiply them together which I covered in a previous video but I just go through squaring um, uh, in words when you're squaring a binomial that is two terms you square the first term to give plus 9 you multiply the first term by the second term and double if you multiply the first term by the second term here you get minus 6i if you double that you get minus 12i by the way doubling means multiplying by plus 2 then you square the second term 2i times 2i is plus 4i squared so that's the hardest part done the next bit is to multiply 6 into this 6 times minus 3 is minus 18 6 times plus 2i is plus 12i and then we just copy down to plus 13 and if we work all of this out we should get 0 now i squared is minus 1 i is the square root of minus 1 so when you square it we get minus 1 of course as you've seen so we have plus 4 times minus 1 here which is minus 4 so now let's gather up all the like terms we have plus 9 minus 4 that's plus 5 plus 5 minus 18 is minus 13 minus 13 plus 13 is 0 so the real part will be 0 now let's look at the imaginary part we have minus 12i plus 12i well that gives us 0i which is 0 of course so the whole thing is just 0 so that's what we have to show that minus 3 plus 2i is indeed a solution of our quadratic equation we could do exactly the same for its conjugate and we'd also get 0